Good evening, dear friends. This is your friend, Pastor Roy, speaking to you this evening and contemplating two deaths, two deaths on the opposite end of the spectrum. Number one, we had Billy Graham. Billy Graham was considered possibly the, the pastor to the world or certainly the pastor to the United States. Billy Graham lived his life uh, clean, uh, ethically, morally, physically, and he brought a message of hope, of strength, of salvation to countless millions of people. As a matter of fact, somebody has said and it's been reported that he brought the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the message of forgiveness, the message of redemption, the message of uh, a life of significance, the, le the message of, of meaningfulness, the message of eternal life, the message of a relationship with God, our Father, Billy Graham a man honored and sought after by president after president. And he lived to 99 years of age. And his children carry on and lived after him. And then you juxtapose him as opposed to Stephen Hawking. In many ways, Stephen Hawking lives a pitiful life. We've seen his suffering and his inability to articulate his ideas except through uh, computer-generated utterances. In, in, in contained, trapped in that body, was a brilliant scientific mind. He understood some of the principles of quantum mechanics, of the vastness of the cosmos, of the dimensions, the scope of the cosmos. And he was a declared atheist. And so what he brought to the world was hopelessness, that everything will just burn out, there'll be the end of the cosmos, the energy will be consumed, the stars will cease to shine, and there'll be the ultimate end of everything. Yes, not within our lifetime, but ultimately. And the value of a human life was ultimately zero. Your, your, your life as a human being had no ultimate purpose or reason. And when you die, it's oblivion. You, you, you fall into the vast darkness of nothingness along with the death of the stars and everything like that. And all the good that you did was meaningless. And so you had juxtaposed to one another, a man who brought hope and life, and the other brought meaninglessness and purposelessness to human beings and really relegated human beings to nothing more than another form of an animal, as opposed to made in the image and likeness of Almighty God. And you contrast, yes, these true, these two philosophies, these two worldviews, and uh, one is not any more scientific than the other. Atheism is not a science. Atheism is a philosophy, it's a world view. Oh, atheism, atheism cannot be supported by science. You think of the information that is contained with the simplest living organism and the DNA contained within that. Atheism, naturalism, materialism has no explanation of from whence that information comes. And as a matter of fact, information only comes from intelligence. What intelligence? The stones, the rocks, the lava, 
The stars were God. And then you look out into the vastness of the cosmos, three to 500 billion galaxies. Why can't we count them? Because from this distance, the clouds of galaxies seems like a cloud. You can't differentiate from one to the other, except you know they're there. Three to 500 billion galaxies. And the further out we look, the more we find. And then each one of those galaxies contains three to 500 billion stars. In fact, we can't even count the stars in our own Milky Way galaxy, not to mention uh, the closest galaxies or the five dis far distant galaxies. So the, the scientific evidence is, is heavily weighted on the side of there is God. In the beginning, God. If, if there was a beginning and scientists is heavily on the side of what we uh, popularly call the Big Bang, uh, but scientifically we call it the, uh, the uh, singularity, where did that come from? Where did the, uh, the, the material, the energy, the whatever it was that was in that, that singularity, where did that come from? It didn't make up itself. Because out of nothing, nothing comes. And the fine-tuning of the universe, you know, the, the, the distance from the, the, the earth, from the sun, if it were closer, it would burn up. It was further away, it would freeze up. The incredible balance of uh, the different um, constants of the universe. We are meticulously balanced like on the edge of a razor. And then you talk about moral per, uh, imperatives, you know. Where do we get ultimate morality from? Who says things are right or wrong? If you just believe in materialism, then anything can be justified because there is no standard. But we all know raping a child is wrong, beating a child is wrong. There are just some things that are inherently wrong. Who says so? Well, the Nazis, with their atheistic viewpoint, had no grounding for principles, and therefore it was perfectly all right to murder and kill and maim. And we have, and God said, and God said, and God said, absolute moral bedrock from which to determine what is right or wrong. So in conclusion, my thoughts are within the last week or so, two giants left this life. One into glorious eternal life where his reception in glory must have been spectacular. And then the other, according to his own philosophy, he just dropped into oblivion. Well, if what we believe is true as Christians, and it is, he didn't just drop into oblivion. He now knows that in the beginning, God. And I pray God have mercy on his soul but also that God have mercy upon those who he influenced because of his uh, reputation and so on, that the philosophy that he held, the worldview that he held, will just be debased, nullified, and people will again follow the facts, follow the evidence, and say, in the beginning, God. And from that we follow that the Son of God came to this earth to suffer and die to pay for those sins of humanity and those that we have personally committed, and that through putting our faith and trust in him, we receive the miraculous gift of eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God 
is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for listening, and may God bless you richly. And uh, I understand that uh, Billy Graham had a large mantle. And I see in my imagination that as he was ascending into heaven as Elijah of old, carried up in the whirlwind, his mantle fell to earth. And I pray that that mantle fall upon us. And we get about the Father's business. Why did Jesus come to earth? That whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. You can't make a disciple unless they're a believer first. And from believers, you make disciples. And from disciples, you make servants. And the field of service is vast and varied as the colors of the rainbow. And so for each one of us, there's a place. No one could do everything, but everybody can do something. And I pray that God show you and direct you. Love you dearly. And uh, God bless you. And I'll be back. My name is Roy, and I'm your friend. God bless you. Goodbye.